existentialism has a reputation for being a gloomy philosophy focused on themes of meaninglessness, the purposelessness of life, the emptiness of the universe, absurdity, pointlessness, and so on. And whether that reputation is uh, ultimately deserved or not is uh, a fun question. We'll be in a better position to answer that at the end of this session on existentialism. But what is true to say of existentialism is that existentialists do say that if we are serious individuals, if we are thinking and passionate human beings, some gloominess and confronting the possibility that the universe is a deeply meaningless place is a part, an integral part of uh, coming to maturity, intellectually and emotionally speaking, as a human being. Now, the phrase, God is dead, points for the existentialist to one of the great crises of the, the modern world, particularly as we get into the 20th century. The uh, most famous author of the quotation, God is dead, is Friedrich Nietzsche, 19th century German philosopher. And while he was not, in my judgment, an existentialist, he nonetheless was sounding many themes that uh, led to existentialism, and the existentialists do look back upon him as a forerunner. God is dead is uh, not meant literally by Nietzsche, nor is it taken uh, so by the existentialists. Rather, it's a, a metaphorical statement. God is a stand-in for religion and religious belief, and the death of God is then the de death of religion. Again, not a biological death, but the decline of religion as an intellectual force, the decline even of religion as an animating cultural force. And by the time we get to the death of Nietzsche in, in 1900, the cusp of the 20th century, the point that is taken up by the existentialists is that it is near certain, if anything can be certain, that there is no God, that religion is spent as a force. And if we're not convinced by that, nonetheless, if we are at all alert uh, to uh, trends, we should be aware that that is a seriously burning possibility. God might very well be dead, and we have to take this as a serious contender. Now, the reasons for the decline of uh, religion are, are several fold. Certainly, some of them are traditionally philosophical. There have been uh, many centuries of debate back and forth of arguments for and against the existence of God. And speaking journalistically, uh, by the time we get to the 1700s on into the 1800s, that is to say, solidly into the modern world. Uh, not a consensus, but certainly a majority of first-rate intellectuals are coming to the conclusion that the arguments for the existence of God really don't work, that the arguments against the existence of God are uh, very powerful and perhaps unanswerable. And I think this is why we see in a generation toward the end of the 1700s and on into the early 1800s, that is to say, the generation of Immanuel Kant, and then in subsequent generations, uh, the generation of Soren Kierkegaard, uh, an abandonment by thinkers who are taking religion seriously and want there to be a place for, uh, for religion, an abandonment of the idea that religion can be proven, that religion even can be made reasonable, and then a reassertion of the necessity of faith as integral to the, uh, to the religious project. But of course, to the extent that uh, one abandons reason uh, and, and adopts religion as simply a matter of faith, one uh, by that fact alone makes religion uh, unappealing to many modern intellectuals, particularly philosophical in individuals who are, are attracted by the power of reason's ability to analyze and solve, uh, or at least provide a useful framework for addressing many of life's important questions. So philosophically, in the philosophical world and in, in the broader intellectual world of the humanities, religion is in decline right, as an intellectual force. And certainly this is a marked tendency by the time one gets to the 1800s, and even more so by the time we get to the 1900s uh, when existentialism matures and gels as a philosophical movement. Now, another part of the story, though, of the decline of religion has to be science. 600 years ago, that is to say, in the 1300s and 1400s, there is no such thing as science, so to speak. There are some antecedent things that are going on, sir. But 
what religion has is an intellectual monopoly on all of life's questions, including cosmological questions about the nature of the heavens and uh, the human being and our place uh, here on, on Earth. Uh, but what happens with startling rapidity starting in the 1500s and picking up speed in the 1600s, 1700s is the new kid on the block. That is to say, science comes along and starts to displace religion as a primary source for thinking people and increasingly the broad mass of people to go to for answers to the way the human body works, how we cure diseases, the way things work in the world, and uh, even up in the heavens. And so what happens is religion's monopoly on intellectual life and philosophical life and scientific life uh, that existed prior to the, 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 the beginning of the modern world is broken and religion over the course of the centuries by the time we get to the 20th century uh, sees its, it, its turf shrinking until there's only a small handful of questions that uh, people are turning to religion to, to answer for. Instead what has happened is that science has taken over the lion's share of uh, the responsibility for pri providing us with answers here. So science's gain has been religion's loss and that's why there's been this ongoing tension between those two institutions uh, in the modern world. But then the point here is that if we extend that trajectory uh, or that development into a trajectory, uh, if over the course of 500 years religion has uh, retreated so much and science has expanded so much, what is the future then of religion 100 years from now or 200 years from now? It seems that religion then is on a path to being made uh, extinct in, in intellectual life. So there are philosophical reasons and scientific reasons for the decline of religion in the modern world. And certainly everybody is aware of these trends by the time we get to the end of the, the 19th century. But by the time we get to the beginning of the 20th century, uh, existentialism is a movement that takes the death of God uh, seriously and puts it front and center in its intellectual project. And for this, what I would like you to imagine is that you are a European, and the first generation of uh, existentialist intellectuals were European. Imagine that you are a European born in the early part of the 20th century, say 1905, like Jean-Paul Sartre was. What is not simply your intellectual upbringing? What do you learn when you go to school and learn philosophy and learn science and so forth? What is your actual lived experience as a European growing up in the first part of the 20th century? 